In this video I want to show you how to do React debugging in VS Code. And here I already prepared for us a project that we want to debug and this is the list of issues where we can select different issues and on the top we are getting a selected amount of them. As you can see our project is running on localhost 5173 and this is important to remember. Now typically if you are debugging your project you might want to use Chrome, you are clicking here inspect, then you jump to the sources, here you put a debugger inside, then reload the page and you can debug properties inside. It is a totally valid approach, but you might want to do exactly the same inside VS Code. What pros and cons it has? As you are working inside your editor, it is comfortable to do debugging inside without need to jump in Chrome, add here debug points and so on. How can we do that? First of all, we must open here on the left a debug window. This is why I am clicking Command Shift D and it opens Run and Debug tab. Here we have three different things and before we will run it we need to create a launch.json file. As you can see here we must click create a launch.json file. Here we must select our debugger. As I am debugging here a React application I want to select web app Chrome and this is how our file looks like. So we have a launch.json and you can see in our files if we open a file tree inside .vs code this is launch.json file so it is not in our project it is only inside VS code. And this is the configuration to start it. Here the type is chrome request launch name is totally fine but URL is wrong. By that because it will attach to the running project and our running project here is on this port 5173 which actually means here in our URL we must provide this port and our web root is totally fine. So our configuration is there. Now we must click again command shift D to activate our debugger mode and here we can click launch. As you can see here on the right it opens a Chrome window. We didn't open it. This is the window which is binded to our VS code. And here on the top you can see buttons to work with debugging. So how do we typically debug our application? First of all we need to look on our list of files and here is my good table where everything is rendered. And what I can do here for example in the start of my component I can just click on the left to add a breakpoint. If you don't know what is breakpoint, this is our stop in application. Which essentially means when we are starting our application, at this specific moment the application will be stopped and we can debug this place. I am sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. Now here I can click on restart and as you can see we are jumping here in debug mode. So on the left we see this debug and not our file tree. And additionally to that you can see that our line is highlighted and we are here. Because our application was started and we are jumping here. As you can see the page is fully white because nothing was rendered. We are stopped in this line. So what can we do here? First of all on the left we see the list of variables. This is the most important stuff because these are all variables which are available for us on this line. For example let's open block, nothing interesting here, local and we see here an array of issues. This is totally correct because here we have issues and we are getting them. And as you can see on hover I can also directly see the array of our items and I can debug every single element that we are getting here. We can't do that when we are not in debug mode, this is only specific to the debug mode. So you can either hover on your local properties here or you can see them on the left. Other than that inside module you can see all your imports, for example here are our classes which are coming from this import, you can check what you have inside and also you have global. Realistically in 90% of the cases you just want to use local or block but not module or global. Now let's say that we don't know what is inside issue entries and total selected and we want to check it. We can click here 
on line 20 to add one more debugging point and now here on the top we can click play. What it does, it continues with execution of our project. If you don't have other debuggers, it will simply execute your whole project. But in our case, it will go through all these lines until our next debugger. And now we're here and our block is looking different. Here we have first of all a function, convert issues to entries, then issue entries. We can see how it looks like. Actually, normally it's not that comfortable to look on the left. You can just hover here and understand how it looks like. Additionally, you can see total selected, the value is zero. And with this, we can always know what values we get inside debugger. Now I want to hit stop to stop debugging completely. I want to remove the breakpoint. In order to do that, I'm clicking right and click remove breakpoint. And now I want to show you condition, which essentially means we can add a breakpoint with condition. I'm clicking here with right button and here I select add conditional breakpoint. And here we can now write a condition with some variable, for example, with total selected. So here we can write total selected, we even get autocomplete equals zero. I'm hitting here enter and now we are getting a conditional breakpoint with condition total selected zero. Now I am launching our Chrome again. As you can see here is our first breakpoint. We're clicking play and we're coming here. But we're only coming in this breakpoint because our total selected is zero. If we are changing that to one, for example, then we won't come there. This is really nice when you have an array of items and you have a problem in one specific item. Then you can add a condition for this specific item. Another thing which is really nice is how we can use watch. For example, here I have a use effect with some logic inside. And what I can do here, I want to put a breakpoint, but additionally inside watch I can hit on plus and write some expression. For example, I'm interested what is the value in total selected smaller than total open issues. So I can write here total selected smaller than total opened issues. I'm hitting here enter and as you can see we're getting two variables. Now let's start our debugging session. As you can see we jumped to this line because here is our breakpoint. We're getting our local properties but additionally here we can see our watched property. So on the left we see our logic and on the right we see the value. It is true. Which essentially means sometimes you don't just have some local properties, you want to check some logic. Then you can write this logic inside your watch and you will see what value it has inside. Another thing that you need to know is the call stack. It is not always helpful, especially not inside frameworks, but if you have some plain JavaScript, it might be helpful to understand your stack trace. So what is stack trace? This is the list of files in a sequence, how they are called or imported in one another. For example, here we can see, okay, this is our source good table G6 file. Now we can see that we are getting commit hook of React, then commit passive and so on. This is all stuff from React. It is not really helpful for our debugging. But if you have some nested components, then you will see here from where this specific file was called through stack trace. And additionally to that, on the bottom you can see breakpoints. Here we have just one of them inside good table. We can toggle it to disable, but additionally we can have code exceptions and uncode exceptions. And uncode exception is really nice when you are getting some error that leads to uncode exception. So it is just broken inside your browser and you want to jump directly in the place where it happens. And now let's talk about all buttons that we have here. First of all, I want to put a breakpoint at the beginning of our React component. I will click here, launch Google Chrome. And here you can see that our line is highlighted where in our breakpoint. Now here on the top we see lots of different icons, what they are doing at all. First of all, you already know play, this is continue. It simply continues executing of our JavaScript. But we have lots of other stuff. Restart, we already know, it will restart our browser. Stop, will just stop debugging. But what about this three? First of all, here we have step over. What it does, it steps on the next line. Let's click here. As you can see, we jump from here to here because this is the next line in our list of execution. Now here I want to click again. We're inside total selected. So we're jumping line by line through our code. But what about this line? 
We have here step into and step out. Step into means that we want to jump inside the function. For example, I can click it in this place. And as you can see, we're not jumping to select all ref. We're jumping inside this function where we just were. In this case, we can debug this specific function. For example, we can see what is inside our issue data is selected false if we need to. But let's say we are done with this function. In this case, we can click step out and we are coming to the next line, which actually means we can step in in the function and step out when we need to. And then we can continue line by line to go through our code and continue debugging and checking variables. As you can see, debugging inside VS Code is done in a really nice way. It is not mandatory because we can debug our code inside Chrome, but we don't have such opportunity in other languages which are not being executed inside browser, like for example Java. There you don't have a choice, you really need a debugging tool which will be inside your editor. And actually, if you're interested to know what will come in React 19 really soon, make sure to check this video also.